clap. Will come and tell you, hey, Baba, don't worry. 
Just be happy. God is with you. When you are weak and when you are down, Luke chapter 1 verse 37 says, For with God nothing is impossible. And this friend will come and say, Hey, don't be sad. Don't be worried. You know why? Because God is with you and nothing is impossible with Him. And He will bring a breakthrough in Jesus' name. Can I hear a loud amen? Can I hear a loud hallelujah? Then it said, son of comfort. Everybody shout comfort. Can you read this? Acts chapter 4, verse 36 and 37. Can someone read that for me? Acts chapter 4, verse 36 and 37. Loudly. And Joseph, uh -huh. by the apostles, was son and Barnabas, uh -huh. which is being interpreted, the son of consolation, uh -huh. and Levite. Yeah. And of the country of Cyprus. Cyprus. Okay, hold it there. Hold it there. Everybody listen to me. Listen to me quickly. Here it is written, Joseph. Okay, Joseph was his common name. But everybody used to call him Barnabas. Everybody shout Barnabas. So there is this man called Barnabas. And he is called the son of encouragement. Or son of consolation. Or son of comfort. You know, if you study the Bible... Every place that you read about somebody, listen, it, it, suppose you are studying about Joseph, or suppose your son of Jesus, he says, Son of who? Jesus. Son of who? Jesus is who? Son of? Jesus. Son of God, yes, definitely. But Jesus in the human form was the son of? And? Exactly. Son of Joseph and Mary. If you study everything in the Bible, it says, Son of, Son of, Son of. But Barnabas is the only man that is written, he is called as a son of encouragement. You know, when I read that, it gave me an idea. What if people are, are going to call you by your character? Do you understand what I'm saying? If they see joy, you are the son of what? If they see Jensa, what are they going to say? Son of who? If they see Lena Chichi, what are they going to say? Son of who? If they are to call you by your character, how is your character? How many of you understand what I'm saying? How many of you understand what I'm saying? See, more than all the anointing, all the things, it's so important that a child of God need to be a man and a woman of character. How many of you understand what I'm saying? In church, very holy. Oh. In school, <laughs> in front of your parents, very good. But outside, your character defines who you are. You know, the president of America said a statement that really, really, really encouraged me. You know what he said? He said, anointing. Say, listen, this is a man who is knowing God. Okay, listen. He said, anointing will let you reach to a level. But it is only character that will make you stay there. How many of you understand what I'm saying? The anointing that you have can take you, take you higher, higher, higher and make you stand there. But I tell you, if you don't have character, it does not matter whether you are prophet, whether you are evangelist, whether you are apostle, it does not matter who you are. If you don't have character, you will fall down. Amen. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Your character is important. Jeremiah 10, 17. I don't know why the Holy Spirit is reminding me about the scripture. God searches the heart. Man looks at the outside, but God looks into your heart. Hey, are you sinning? Are you doing things that God doesn't want you to do? Is there any character inside you that is against the will of God? Don't do it. Don't stand against God. Because our God is a God who is just. You can pray here, you can sing here, you can speak in tongues, you can buck, you can shake, you can fall down, all that. But if your inner heart is not right, if your vessel is not holy, I'm telling you, 
there is going to be judgment. The Holy Spirit says he is going to prune you. He is going to cut you. He is going to punish you. You know why? Because he wants you to grow. Everybody shout character. Everybody shout character. I don't know why, but the Holy Spirit is just inspiring me to tell you, be wise. Don't be foolish. Don't do like the world does. Don't watch what the world watches. Don't sing what the world sings. Don't hear what the world hears. You are a man. Leviticus chapter 10 verse 10 says, And behold, there is a difference between the holy and the unholy. There is a difference between the pure and the unpure. There is a difference. You can't walk like the world walks. You can't watch the serials like the world watches serials. You can't do that. You are separated in the name of Jesus. The Bible says there's a difference between darkness and the light. How many of you get what I'm saying? You are anointed. You are called. You are elected. Don't do the things of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was so happy. One of the brothers in our church, I'm not mentioning the name, asked me, Oh, Pastor, how do I tell about Jesus to my friends? I said, first, your character. Someone from here already said, how do I tell my friends about Jesus? How do I tell? I said, simple, your character. When they see how you are, when they are watching bad pictures and bad videos, oh, you will say, sorry, I cannot be God. I am a child of God. I can't do it. When they see that, they are hey, it's called Yahweh. What happened to him? What happened to him? Let me see. That is character. Can I go deeper? Can I go deeper, guys? So, Barnabas is a son of encouragement, a son of consolation, but he had certain characters. Can you read Acts chapter 4, verse 37? Acts chapter 4, verse 37. Quickly. Having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. We heard about tithe and offering. The tenth percent of all your salary belongs to the church. If you get thousand real as your salary, hundred real belongs to the church. If you use that hundred real for iPhone 6, mobile, what not, I tell you it will be broken in Jesus' name. I'm telling you my real experience. I'm not joking. I got a, I got a very expensive car. A very, very expensive car. Forget Land Cruiser. I have another car at home. I bought a very expensive car when I was in the world. That was three, three and a half years ago. I never used to type. I used to think that, okay, I will type later. Like, like Jen has put a question today. If I cannot type later, so this month I will say, hey, not this month. Next month, with that month, I will put together. Well, nothing happens. Next month, when you see the type, oh, thousand plus thousand, two. Oh, no, 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 I cannot type. So I kept that type. I kept it. I went and bought a very expensive car. My experience. And you know what happened? The first day. Hallelujah. The first day I took that car out, put convertible. It's an open roof. A convertible and driving. I went to the souk. Everybody ever heard of souk? Walk it. Souk. I went to the souk to show off. New car. I went to the souk. I was standing in the line. And the Qatari lady who was in the Land Cruiser took straight rivers into my car. <laughs> Imagine what would happen to your heart. Brand new car. Very, very expensive car. It has a convertible. And I'm driving, I'm showing off. This lady, <laughs> and you know what she's saying? I didn't see your car. <laughs> <laughs> She came out of the car, and what's your feel? She said, I didn't see your car. I didn't see your car. And, and I said, you didn't see my car? <laughs> this is what happens if you're wrong. At that time, I heard a voice in my heart saying, son, you show off in the world, but you should remember, you must show off for Christ and not for man. You don't need to show your people your car. You don't need to show anybody your money. But what you do in secret, your heavenly father will start to reward you. Amen. And from that day onwards, I made a commitment. 
I will never, 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 the first day when my salary comes, I will keep that apart and give it for the time. I will not compromise on that. Because whatever you do with the rest of the money, I'm telling you, God will honor you. Thank for the Lord. 90% is in your hand. That 90% will flourish it. I have seen it happen, guys. So I'm telling you, don't rob God. Okay, quickly. He said, what did Barnabas do? Barnabas sold his land and kept it in the feet of the apostles. That means he was a person who is to sacrifice what he had to help others. In the Hebrew Bible, it says that Barnabas was the only man in the church who used to go and help the poor people. All the others used to be, be behind the apostles. Oh, Apostle Peter, Apostle John, they used to be behind him. But Barnabas was the only man who used to go in between the poor people and help them and say, Brother, sister, can I help you? You need finance? Can I help you? Can I do something for you? Barnabas was the only person. Everybody shout help. help. Everybody shout comfort. comfort. He was the only man who comforted. Can I go fast? Can I go fast? Last week I spoke about this man. His name is Chaplain Charlie Waters. You know what he did? He was a he was a man who was in the army. And in that army in 1967 on November 19th, you know what happened? He was facing an army in the battle. You know what happened? Everyone was shooting at the army camp. And he was the only one who ran outside without any west or any guard. And he took the people and he was getting bullet Wounds. He was being shot, shot, shot. Still, he took the people and he brought them safe to the camp. The, 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 the history says he saved six people that day. Six. Everybody shout six. six. Everybody shout six. six. He saved six people and he died on that on November 19. 1967 because he went to help people. How many of you would risk your life to help your friend? To live care. It's very easy, but it's very difficult. But let me tell you one thing. There is one man in the Bible who, who was so pure, so just, so holy, without any sin. And he died for you and for me. His name starts with a J and ends with an S. His name is Jesus. Jesus. His name is Jesus. Can you shout Jesus? Jesus. Jesus is the only man completely pure, without any sin, died on the cross of Calvary and said, I will die for the salvation of mankind. Amen. And he is the best friend that you can have. Barnabas died and he's no more. But my Jesus, he died on the cross, yes. But on the third day, he rose again and my daddy is standing right next to me. Amen. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Are you excited? Yes. Are you excited? Are you excited? The second point, quickly, Barnabas was a man who seeks the best in others. He seeks the best in you. He seeks what you have. Everybody knows who Saul is. Saul was a man who used to persecute all the Christians. All the Christians were so scared and afraid of Saul. Why? Because Saul used to kill them. But when Saul in the road of Damascus changed and the light of the Lord came upon him, he became a follower of Jesus. He changed his name from Saul to do, do. Come on, louder, do. He changed his name from Saul to Read Acts chapter 9, verse 26 and 27. Take your Bibles and read. Acts chapter 9, verse 26 and 27. Come on, read louder. When he came to Jerusalem, when he, came to Jerusalem he, tried to join the disciples. he tried to join the disciples. They were all afraid of him. They were all afraid of him. Okay, hold it, hold it, hold it. Here is Saul, a man who is to kill the Christians, are coming to Jerusalem so that the disciples can see him. But everybody is afraid. Hey, no, that man is a man who killed Christians. But let me tell you, there was only one man who stood by the hands of Paul. There was only one man who said, hey brothers, hey brothers. 
This is not Saul. This is Paul. And you know what Paul is? He is a man who is a follower of Christ. Only one man held the hand of this man. Have seen him. And you know who was that man? Who? Who? Read, continue, continue. What does it, it say? Read. Not believing that he really was a disciple. Not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas, read it. Ah. But Barnabas took him. Barnabas took him. And brought him. To the and brought him. Okay, read. To the apostles. To the apostles. He told them. He told them. How Saul. Uh huh. How Saul on his journey uh -huh. had seen the Lord. Yes. And that the Lord had spoken to him. Uh huh. And how in Damascus. Yes. He had preached fearlessly. In the name of Jesus. Listen. Barnabas took this man called Saul. And he showed them to the disciples and said, Saul is a follower of Jesus Christ. He seeks the best in your life. Let me tell you, there may be no, not many Barnabas in your life. You might be in a situation now where you have no real friends, no close friends in your heart. But let me tell you one thing. Even if the whole friendship and your world will leave you, I will tell you one thing. There is one person who seeks the best in your life. And you know who that person is? His name starts with a J and ends with an S. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He will seek the best. You might say, everybody will leave me. All my friends left me. My family left me. Everything is in chaos. But I tell you, only one person will remain, and that is Jesus. Can I go deeper? Can I go deeper, guys? Again, Saul, a former killer, became Paul. But it was a true friend who sees the goodness and encourages and says, I believe in you. I always like baseball. It's one of my favorite sports. Basketball and baseball is my favorite sport. I spoke about these two people, Jackie Robinson and P.B. Reese. So Jackie Robinson, this guy, he was the first black American to play in the baseball league in America. And during his time, he made a mistake. The entire crowd, 40,000 people, made fun of him, made him sad. He was depressed. But P.B. Reese, his close friend, came running to the field hold him close and he did like this saying this guy belongs to our team and everybody in the crowd became quiet why because P.B. Reese saw the good in Jackie Robinson I'm just giving you an example but I tell you the only true friend who will be with you is Jesus and no one else the third point I'm going deeper can I go deeper a true friend will give you a spiritual influence. Everybody shout spiritual. spiritual. Come on, everybody shout spiritual. spiritual. A true friend will give you a spiritual influence. Read, read. Acts chapter 11 verse 22 and 20 to 24. Our Barnabas, come on, quickly, read. with you. With God, all things are possible. He is with you. He will never leave you. 
that is a true friend. A spiritual influence will be upon his life. How many of you have friends who are spiritual influence you? Very few, look. But this is what God wants. A church, remember, the one sitting next to you is your friend. If you are tired, if you are weak, you need to ask them to pray for you. That is why fellowship is so important. Do not miss church. If anything that comes, I was there talking to, to our dear brother Cameron, from Cameroon, Tata, I was talking to him. I said, don't miss church. You might get a good job, you might get the best salary, but don't miss church. You know why? Because church is the place where you get encouraged. When there are two friends who will pray for you. When two friends will start crying and praying for you. How many of you get what I'm saying? See, my wife was in the hospital last week. She was in the emergency. She was there for, uh, for, for a long time. But I believe it is because of you guys' prayer. It is the church prayer that encouraged her out of that situation. How many of you get what I'm saying? It is only because of that spiritual influence that Jensa is here. Otherwise, she would have been in antibiotics on trips and she would have been there. But it's only because of the church and the church prayer that brought her out. In the same way, Barnabas was a man who was a spiritual influence. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and he was a spiritual influence upon other people's life. In the same way, Jesus is a spiritual influence upon your life. No matter who may turn against you, Jesus is always there with you and he will never, ever, ever leave you. No will he forsake you. Can you shout glory? Glory! glory. Shout glory! Always remember. I just want to quickly tell about this person. His name is D. Merrill. Okay? And he has wrote this book. If you get a chance, please do read this. It's called Another Chance How God Overrides Our Big Mistakes. So, D. Merrill, let me tell you a story. This man was a very, very, you can't imagine, highly paid professional. Very highly paid professional. If I tell you the amount of salary that he got, you guys would just open your mouths. That time, okay, now listen what happens. A big economic crisis came to America, okay? And he left his job and, and, and he lost all his money. And then he went into a small job with a very, very little money. Now if you hear that money also, you will get shocked. A man who stayed there came here. Something like our situation here. Qatar Petroleum Stuffs are being kicked out and they are now working in small town. Really? I'm not joking. I met a man recently who lost his job, suddenly have a huge loans in the bank and they are working now in, in, in salaries worth of thousands and two thousands. Why? They can't survive. Exactly, I'm telling you, this is a prophecy. Write this down. Write it. 29, you write it. This is a prophecy. People are going to lose jobs in Qatar quickly, very quickly. But those who dwell in the shadow of God will never, ever, ever lose their job. Amen. Those who don't know God and honor God, they will be honored. And God will protect their job. Hallelujah. Can I go deeper? Can I go deeper? So this man, Dean Miril, had a big job, lost his job came to a small job, very depressed, very sad. And the boss who was working on his behalf, the boss, he is a man who was so rude to him. Very rude. How many of you had bosses like that? Very rude? Yeah, some, <laughs> some, some of the boys is very, very rude. Very rude, they used to make fun of him here. And so he made a big mistake. In the, in the book, if you read, he made a big mistake. And this big mistake, the boss made fun of him and said, who are you? And they made fun of him. He was so sad and depressed. He went back to his room, his cabin, and he was so sad. He said, Lord, why this is happening to me? I became a Christian. I changed my life, and yet I'm, I'm in this. He was so sad. When he looked on the table, he found an envelope. He said, what is this envelope? He just opened the envelope. He doesn't know who wrote this, but there was a letter in that envelope. He took that envelope and he, he read it. He said, 
if one person in Christ suffers, we all will suffer. Therefore, brother, don't lose hope. I am with you. He saw this letter and he was astonished. There is no one who could keep that envelope there except one person. His name starts with a J and ends with an S. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. At the perfect time, he saw an envelope. He opened that envelope and he saw a letter saying, if one man in the body of Christ suffers, the entire church suffers. But let me tell you one thing that I will never ever leave you. That was his experience. And then from there, you know, let me tell you, he suffered a long time in the same job. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, God raised him up much higher than the previous salary and God raised him to high. Now, I think he owns a few airports. Okay. Uh, fourth character of Barnabas. He works for the success of others. Read Acts chapter 11, verse 25 to 26. Quickly, Acts chapter 11, verse 25 to 26. Read quickly. Yes. Brought him to Antioch. Okay. For a full year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church uh -huh. and taught great numbers of people. Right. The disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Right. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to me carefully. What happened here? Barnabas went, took Saul, or in other words, Paul, took him, encouraged him, and gave him leadership. He worked for the success of others. How many of you understand what I'm saying? He worked for the success of other people. In the same way, a true friend will work for your success. Let me go quickly. Again, I love baseball. <laughs> I love baseball. I'm going to go quickly and tell you about this. Now, this man, everybody say Ricky Henderson. Okay, so Ricky Henderson is a very, very famous baseball player. One of my favorites, okay? And here is Lau Broke. Everybody say Lau Broke. Okay, let me tell you what happened here, okay? Lau Broke had the best base record. Okay, I don't know how many of you know baseball, but there is a record that people break. Like, you know, in jumping, there is a record. In jumping from high jump, there is a record. In the same way, baseball has a base record. And Lau Broke, for 19 years, everybody shout 19. For 19 years, this Lau Brook had that record. Nobody could break that record. That base record was this man's. Now, out of nowhere, Ricky Henderson comes. And the first year Ricky Henderson comes, he breaks that record. What would you do? Ah, uh -huh, tell me, tell me, tell me. What would you do? Oh, Ricky Henderson. Yes, we feel jealous, we feel angry, we feel things that, that we are not supposed to. But you know what happened? When the newspaper article came to Love Group, you know what he said? He said, praise God. He said, praise God that I will keep cheering on for Ricky Henderson. How many of you get what I'm saying? A true friend, a true Barnabas, a true friend will say, hey, I will work for your success. I see that you are a great man and I see that you will be successful. That is a true friend. Can you shout success? success. Can you shout success? success? Everybody shout together. One, two, three, success. success. And my last conclusion is the story of what numbers is true. He's a great friend. But let me tell you all these points point out to only one person and that is the greatest friend that you can ever have and that is Jesus.